Ah, what lovely weather, right? Yes, you are still on XSplit broadcast to do tutorials. Before we start though, please let me know if you see a van drive behind because I'm waiting on the delivery. But today, as you may have guessed, we're gonna teach you about removing the backgrounds and making your videos look a little bit special. Let's start the show, so run the titles. Hello, welcome back already, as I promised. Now, last week, I think we got to this stage where we got a normal background. Uh, we've got some sort of logo or some sort of image, whatever you put onto yours yourself. And we use the color key to change a few things. I think we also had some, uh, some lovely music. Um, sorry, lovely music. No. This week we're going to take it next to the next step. I mentioned on, on my introduction to the show that you don't need to have a green screen. You, you don't. What I would say is think about logically. If you can have a, a plain background, whether that's a, a, a normal wall that's an, a different colour to anything that you're wearing or skin colour. So don't have a sort of creamy pink background because if you try and get rid of it, your body will go as well. Okay. Let's import a background first of all. So I'm going to go add source, media file, because I'm looking for a picture. And I'm going to open this one. I'm going to press Control Shift F in my case to resize it. And this is a photo I took yesterday. 16 degrees temperatures here in Germany, and what a lovely day it was. Um, I'm going to drag this. Oh, one thing I meant to show you last week is very good practice is to rename your files, right? Because if you're running a live show, what you don't want to have to do is to be looking down your files going, where's the river picture one? Uh, if you rename it to, let's go to rename. Rename it to river picture. Then it's a lot easier to find when you're running your live shows. Okay, I'm going to drag this just below my camera for now. Oops, let's put just one more up. River picture, camera. There we go. I'm going to get rid of the logo because we don't need that for this show. Just hide that for now. And, oh, I'm also going to do what I always do, which is get rid of it out of the source in memory. Here we go. To get rid of the background, the two options you've got really are Go to color so in my case i'm going to use chroma key in your case if you've got a different color background remember use the color key and the eyedropper tool to select your color and then fine tune it here so take your time get that bit done once you're done you should end up with something that looks similar to this and i would now probably move me around myself somewhere different let's just go with there for now right the one thing I would say to you the best way to make yourself look realistically at a scene is to be there right you're never gonna look a hundred percent realistic by replacing the background anyway right it adds a bit of fun to your show having different backgrounds for example you could put yourself in the Arctic or wherever there are a few ways to make it look more realistic. Number one is to get rid of your headphones. And the second thing I would probably do is I'd mess around with the colours to see if I could make myself look a bit more natural to the scene. And I would alter my lighting as well. So wherever the sun, if the sun's coming from, say, over there, I would move my lights to try and make it look more realistic. However, the thing you can see here straight away that it's not realistic is I've got a river here that isn't doing anything. It's not moving. There's no tree movement with the wind. And it's a very static scene where normally, obviously, it wouldn't be. So the other way we can do that is we can 
turn it into a video. Same place, same location, obviously I filmed it with video. We've now got the flowing river and what I've done just to show you is I created a loop because if we go further on I got lazy and started moving around, walk around with the camera. So obviously once it starts moving we lose the effect. Personally what I'd do here is I'd get rid of the sound completely and I'd put my own sound in because as it goes past the loop, if you just listen you get a prominent you get a prominent pause. So I'd get rid of that and I'd put my own sound effects in. Like ambient sound effects, river flowing. Right, so that is a basic change whether you're changing to an image or a video. Happy with that one. I am going to set you some homework right now. What I would love you to do is to create your own video with a, a either a video background or a picture background. The funnier the better. Um, don't forget mess around with the color your your color effects on yourself to make sure you try and match the scene. If you want to add sound effects, please do. And then post it on YouTube and send me a link in the comments below. That's your homework. Right? You've got probably about four days to get it done or five days to get it done before the next show. Or whenever. Whenever you've watched this, this particular episode, send me a link in the future. Because I want to see them. It should be good. We're going to take now to the next step. The next step is having a fake foreground and a fake background. And the reason why I suggest this is a good thing is because it makes the scene look a lot more realistic, even though it's a virtual scene. To do that, we need to do a tiny bit of photo editing in Photoshop or whichever other program you use. Don't panic over it, it is literally a two minute job. So we're going to jump across now to Photoshop to show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so welcome to Photoshop. This is an image I've taken from a video. So I've basically played the video, paused it, took a screenshot and imported it into Photoshop. What I want to do is isolate this desk. And the way we do that, with Photoshop nowadays, there is a lovely tool somewhere here called Object Selection Tool. Draw a rough mask around the object, and as you can see, it's picked that out quite well. I'm going to do a couple of fine adjustments using the quick selection tool, just to get rid of the last bit at the bottom. Done. All right, I'm going to now create a new layer by pressing this button down here. Oops, sorry, a bit loud. Make sure that layer is selected. Press D to make sure your colors are default black and white and the bucket fill tool, we are going to fill that area black. Select inverse, so we're selecting this part and we're gonna paint this with the bucket tool white. We're gonna save this now as a mask. File save as a JPEG. And I will call this River 2 or River Mask. Now I'm not actually going to save it because I've already created one. So I'm going to cancel that. And that is it. We're now going to jump back in to XSplit. Okay, so we're back in XSplit. I've already imported the river scene where I actually took that video, took that photo from. And this is what it looks like. So it's behind me there. There's the, the desk you can see we, we took the we drew around. And what I will do first of all is I'm going to move myself into more or less the right position and scale scale it down as if I'm going to be sat at that table. That, what do you call it? Picnic table. Something along those lines. Now, if you right click or go to settings on your camera you've got an option here of effects and the first one's highlighted which is masking which is exactly what we're about to do so we're going to mask we're going to select a file and i called it river scene mask bring that in looks strange doesn't work does it now if you click master stage 
it will put the mask onto the scene rather than onto me. And that is done. Now, if I move myself around now, wherever I move to, I will be always behind that desk. All right. So the last thing I would do now is I would mess around with the color grading to make myself look a bit more realistic about being there. I would probably dress appropriately. I would get rid of the headphones and try and hide the microphone. And as you can see, it makes it a lot more realistic than just having a background and me sort of like blah, 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 yes? You can do this in any scene you want. You can make it into a studio scene with a desk, your old Mac, your old MacBook in front of you. So you can create whatever imagination you have, you can create a scene with it using this masking effect. Right. In fact, let's, let's show you a couple that I've made in the past. One, one. I am disoriented. I'm a little mad, if you can't tell that already. Okay, pretty cool, huh? That is it for the first part of today. We're now going to take a quick coffee break, like we did last time, because I'm... I'm parched. I need a coffee. Once I've had a coffee... We'll have a look then at the scenes and the four scenes we have here, how to put in a scene change, how to use transitions, and if we get time, I'll show you how to set favourites up and everything like that. I'll see you in a bit. Take a quick break. Hi, just a polite reminder, please don't forget to subscribe or at least like. It means the world to me. Let's go back to the show. Good. I hope you've enjoyed your coffee. Welcome back. Scenes and scene changes and transitions is the next step. This is a very short sec section because I'm not, it's not, there's not that much to go into depth with really. We're going to start off with the basics. The first thing is renaming your scene. So this particular scene, which is the one we always, which I've shown you so far, I'm going to call main and click outside. And as you can see, it's changed to main. I would always suggest, especially if you're filming live, and you're streaming to have a scene similar to this. A be right back scene. All right. So let's call that. I'm going to call that uh, interval. Really, I should be calling it the emergency help scene. <laughs> All right. The other thing I suggest you have when you're doing a live show is some sort of show introduction a countdown to your show going live now there's there's various different places you can get things like this from what do i mean this sort of thing obviously i've designed this this has been designed on a after effects um, but there are various places where you can get countdown timers or make your own timer i'm not here to teach you how to make this sort of video um, but this is one I would normally have with perhaps some music. It allows then time for your guests to arrive to your live show. All right, so I'm going to call this one perhaps the, the, yeah, the countdown or intro, intro counter, countdown, whatever. Intro countdown, add some music, job done. So we've got a main one. Did you notice there the wavy effects? Now, where did I get that from? As you can see, just above, we have some built-in transitions. Thank you very much, XSplit, for these. These are all built in, and I'm not going to go through them all with you. I'll let you have a play with them. Let's try Zoom. You can also ch change the transition speeds, and you can also do stinger transitions, which you have to create yourself. I'm not showing you that today because I want to do a separate lesson on that one, including Luma transitions. So let's just have a look at the built-in default ones. Uh, we'll go fade to white and see what happens. Back to the intro, and it literally fades to white before revealing your shot. If, however, you want to have, let's say, for example, from the intro, I want to do something different when I go into the main one. I don't want that white effect. I want something a bit more fancy. You can also do individual ones per scene. 
The way you do that is you right click, transition override, and this is where you can choose individual for that particular scene. So now if I go back to the intro, it should go white. Go back to main, it should have something different hopefully. We do. You see what I mean? Okay. That's the transitions. Once you're happy with them, say for example you find one that you think, oh that was fabulous. Click on that and it adds it to your favourites. Right. Open your favourites here. Alter your settings on that arrow. So favourites are here. Fave to white. Cool. Other tips for scenes is think big, right? So you've got you've got an interval, you've got maybe an introduction to the show, but you can also do introductions to shows don't have to be just a countdown. You can do something like this. Hello, heading off to, to my show. Hopefully get there before the audience, but I'll see you soon. So all I've done is obviously turn my, turn my chair, think, think slightly bigger with green screen. You don't have to be facing the camera. So you can put yourself into a scene anywhere you want, as long as you've got a microphone in the right place. Um, yeah. But it's an idea, isn't it? And that is where we're going to leave it today. Look forward to next week. Next week, we're going to be doing um, the actual process of getting yourself on a live show, whether that is uh, whichever platform, really. We'll show you the process of broadcasting a live show, some tips for getting it right. And I'm going to be looking forward to your homework. Remember what your homework was? Is to go out and film some sort of background and then colour key or green screen yourself into it Maybe add some nice little effects. Record it no longer than three minutes, please. And um, send me the link in the comments once you've done that. Cool. Thank you very much for today for staying, staying with me. And I'll see you in a couple of days. All right. Bye for now. I'm going to get back on that train. See you in a bit.